How's it going guys? My name is Dom and today I'm going to be showing you how to create this button right here using HTML and CSS. It's actually really easy to create something like this. As you can see when hovering over, it's going to change the background color with a nice smooth animation as well as the bottom left and bottom right squares are going to swap over to the opposite side and also turn into a diamond. So that right there of course gives it a bit more of a flair. Um, if you would like to add that to your button, but yeah, I'm going to be showing you how to do this in this video right now. So going inside this tab, let's begin from scratch to create what I just showed you. So going inside the index HTML, it currently looks like this. We're going to be including a new button on the page with a type of button and a class of let's say large dash button, okay? This class here is going to allow us to be specific that this button is gonna be the fancy one with the animations and the squares, etc. okay? Inside here, let's just say learn more in all caps as the button display text. Then if I refresh the browser, we of course get something like this, there we go. And we can go now into the CSS file to begin styling up this button. Firstly, let's target the class of large dash button. And the very first thing we're gonna do is we're going to be setting a CSS variable. We're gonna say dash dash border dash width equal to four pixels. This here is just a variable. We can reference this value later on to give us four pixels. So more on this shortly we need the variable to get the animations to work correctly. So I'll explain more about this very shortly. Let's now hop down here and say padding at 0.75 EM, top and bottom, and one EM left and right. Of course, EM refers to the current font size, okay? We can now say a color of a white, a background of black, there we go. We're gonna be using a border here, and instead of saying uh, one pixel solid and black, we're gonna use the border with uh, CSS variable or CSS property. Now, I made a mistake, this actually needs to be one pixel and not four, okay? Now, let's, instead of one, we're gonna say var and then say dash dash border width. So basically now, this just means border, one pixel, solid, black, okay? Hopping down here, we can say outline of none and a cursor of pointer, as well as a font family. I'm gonna be using the Lex End font family. You can of course use whatever you like and a fallback to sans serif. I'm also gonna set a font weight of 500, okay? And alongside that, a letter spacing of 0.1 EM, okay? I'm gonna stop right here, save this, go back in the browser, refresh, and we get this right here. As you can see, we have the padding applied, we have the letter spacing, the background, and so on. So everything currently is working as expected. Now, we did add a border of one pixel solid and black, but it is not visible because of course the background is also black, okay? The reason why this border needs to be there is because when we animate and change the background to be white, we want that black border to still be there. So it's just filling in the blanks for now. And of course, later on, again, when you hover over it, you're gonna be able to see the border, okay? Moving forward, we can also do one last thing here and set the position to be relative. This here is important for the next part when we get the squares to be displayed. So to get the squares to display, we're gonna be taking advantage of CSS pseudo elements. Now, for those of you who aren't aware, a pseudo element in CSS is simply just a virtual element which we create um, using CSS. So it works in a much similar fashion to simply just having a div inside the button, okay? We can give it a width and a height and a background and we can move it around, animate it, etc. okay? So we're gonna be doing that using CSS. Let's say large dash button and then say colon colon before, then say large button colon colon after. So we're targeting two pseudo elements here. Of course, that's gonna be two squares, okay? So, What's happening here is we're gonna be setting a square size. We'll say dash dash square dash size, okay? Then say four pixels, okay? This here is just a CSS variable like this one up here, just to store a temporary variable. We're gonna be referencing it very soon. Now, also keep in mind that this colon colon before 
refers to the left square and after is the right square, okay? So for these squares, we're going to say content of empty string. This here is important to pseudo elements to getting them to display in the first place. I've also got a whole video dedicated to pseudo elements if you want to learn more. Okay, moving forward, we can say position of absolute. This here works in conjunction with the relative position in the parent, okay, the button, to allow us to position the square in whatever position we like. So, of course, we need the left square to be in the bottom left and the right in the bottom right. It's going to allow us to do that, okay? Let's also say a width of var and then use the square size variable. So, in other words, width 4 pixel. Same for the height, we'll say var and then square size. We're going to be referencing the square size also later on to get the animation to work, which is why it's a CSS uh, variable or property. Back down here, we can say a background of just black, okay? And we're done with this first part, okay? If I save this, go back in the browser, refresh, nothing has happened, okay? But if I was to inspect the button here, we can see we get those two squares right there highlighted in blue, before and after, left and right, yeah? So now let's move those squares to the correct position. Back in here, we can say large button, colon, colon, before, starting with the left square. We can say a top of calc 100% plus five pixel. What this is doing is we're saying, look, let's start from the top of the button. Then we're gonna say, take 100% of that height and add five pixel. I'll save this back in the browser, we'll refresh here, and we get this right here. The square has moved from, from this, you know, from where it was before, okay? And we're just saying, look, let's take from the top of the button, 100% down and then add a little bit of, of space, five pixels, which gives us that gap there between the button and the square, okay? Now, as for the, uh, the, the left side, of course, the square needs to be on the left side, yeah, just like the example, right? So to push that across to the left side, we're gonna use the left property. We'll say left and zero. Zero being the start of the button, okay? Save this, refresh, and we get this here. If you were to pause the video and just zoom in here, you'll see that there's one pixel of space between the button and the square. That's due to the border, which is why we had this border width property set above. We can reference it down here. We're gonna say calc, and then simply uh, take the negative version of that border width. So negative one pixel. If I was to say negative one as an example here, you'll see, if I say it back in the browser, it's gonna remove that one pixel and give us perfect alignment with the side of the, uh, side of the button. So let's, let's create that effect using the CSS property. We'll say calc and we'll just say var border width and then multiply it by negative one, giving us negative one. Save, refresh, and there we go. It's in the correct position. Let's do the same thing for the right button. I'll copy this code. We'll say colon, colon, after, and then simply change left to be right instead. Okay, very simple. Save this back in the browser, and there we go. Okay, we are done with the majority of this stuff to do with the positioning. We now need to apply the animations when hovering over. Let's start with the button. We're gonna go back inside here. We're gonna say large button colon hover when hovering over. We'll change the background to be white instead of black. And we can make the text color now, of course, a um, just a black there. There we go. I'll save this and we can see now when hovering over, it's gonna change those colors, perfect, but there's no animation. So to add that in, go back in the large button rule set at the top. And we're just gonna say here transition transition for the background at 0.3 seconds and the color at 0.3 seconds, just meaning that basically it'll take 0.3 seconds for both the background and the color to change their value. Save this and refresh, hover over, and we get that effect right there. As for the squares, to get them to swap sides, what are we gonna do? Well, down here we're gonna say large button, colon, hover once again, and then say colon, colon, before, starting with that left square. The left square needs to go over to the right side. So for this one, we're gonna say left, 
then just say calc once again. And we're going to start with the 100% value. So just simply take the left and push it across all the way to the right. Okay. I'll save this, refresh, hover over, and there we go. It's a bit hard to see. So I'm just going to change the color of the, uh, of the square temporarily to be red so we can see where it is. I'll try again. I'll refresh, hover over, and there we go. As you can see, it's kind of pushed over more towards the right side. That's due to the fact that it includes, so that width, when, when you set the left of 100%, it's going to take the start of the square and push it across. Okay, so we've got the width of the square, which is causing it to go over, as well as a subtraction on that border once again. Okay, so to make that make sense, let's, let's go back in here. And we're going to also say calc 100%, right? Then do, let's subtract the square size. Okay, again, the reasoning for the CSS property up here is so we can reference it down here as well. So take the square size and subtract that from that, uh, from that value. I'll save back in the browser, refresh, and now it's almost there. There's just that little bit, that one pixel left, which is causing it to not be all the way to the right side. So let's simply just add that little space on. We'll say plus bar, then border width. I'll save back in the browser and we can refresh. And now it's visible, sorry, it's invisible because the right square is on top of it, right? So it's perfect. Okay, let's just copy this across now, get rid of this background, okay? And we'll say after, and again, simply just changing that from left to right. Save, refresh, we're gonna see no change because they're in the opposite positions, looks the same, but they actually moved, yeah? So let's get the animation working to see the effect. Up inside the combined selector, we're going to say transition and we'll say here uh, left at 0.3 seconds and right at 0.3 seconds. Target both, right? Back in the browser, refresh and there we go. Perfect, yeah? The last thing to do is going to be to add that change where it turns into a diamond, okay? Uh, that's, that's pretty straightforward. We can do that using transform. So we'll say down here when hovering over, we can just copy that uh, this value in uh, twice. So we'll just say here, transform and we can rotate and we're gonna say 315 degrees just so it has more of a chance to spin around in the uh, animation. So we'll copy this here and then we can also, so in both before and after, and we can also add this to the transition to say also transform at 0.3 seconds. I'll save, refresh here. And now we get the finished product. We get the, uh, the squares flipping the sides with the animation and also turning into a diamond. So that is how to create this animated hover button using HTML and CSS. If this video helped you out, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to Decode. And here is another video.